Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight for what is our very first webinar hosted by Brenda Collahan Fine Art. Uh, a very warm welcome. We hope that all our technical issues have been resolved and that this is coming to you nice and clearly via Facebook. Before we do begin proceedings, I'd like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of the lands on which many of us are gathered tonight across the 29 clan groups of the Sydney metropolitan area, referred to collectively as the Eora Nation. I extend a very special welcome to all who've joined us this evening for this first online exhibition, which we open the exceptional Stranger at the Door by Sue McLeod Beer. Sue joined the Brenda Collahan Fine Arts Stable in 2019 and was one of our very first professional local artists. She's based close to our gallery in Gladesville in Sydney's northern suburbs. A finalist in the Mossman Art Prize and the Raven Woods Women, Women's Art Prize, Sue's painting Stranger at the Door, the title piece for this exhibition, won the 2020 Community Prize in Hunters Hill. Two times winner of the Nora Heisen Award, Sue has also been selected twice as a finalist in the very prestigious Gallipoli Art Prize. Stranger at the Door was painted in 2020 when lockdown anxieties were high, fearing our neighbours or even the groceries left for us at the door. And now in the middle of another lockdown again in 2021, this painting and indeed the exhibition as a whole is even more relevant as we are all faced with another tense environment. For the last couple of years, Sue has been making these works and especially over this last 12 months in executing these paintings in this exhibition, she set about to capture that unsettling presence that we see in the everyday, especially within very moody canvases, which were mostly executed on plain air. Within each work, Sue explores worlds within worlds, environments that, that just aren't always exactly what they seem. Imaging Sydney scenes, particularly the Northwestern locale. Her paintings include the striking buildings in Callan Park, Roselle, the water's edge of Looking Glass Bay in Gladesville and vistas of Kissing Point Park in Putney. Sue McLeod Beer, welcome. Hi Brenda, thank you for having me here tonight. And You're lovely, to have everybody. <laughs> lovely to have everyone watching as well, it's brilliant. It's great, <laughs> it's fantastic we're able to do this. Yes, indeed. So your paintings are a wonderful vignette of current Sydney life. Each of them seems to have a unique narrative. Can you tell us a little more about your interesting themes and your motivation to capture those themes? Yes, um, ideas, in my, ideas in my sketchbooks are the starting point for quite a few of my paintings. That one in particular, like um, Meditating House, the one you're showing now, I was waiting for a a bus and noticed the potential in that scene. It, it just amused me. Um, so yeah, I did a little quick, quick little sketch in my little book. Um, yeah, some friends live around the corner from there. So the couple are loosely based on them walking their dog. Um, to get a strong composition though is, is everything. Once that's working, it's satisfying to see all the pieces mm -hmm. fit into place like a puzzle. Absolutely. Tell us a bit more about the very intriguing title piece, Stranger at the Door. Well, yeah, that title comes from my painting of the same name done in lockdown in 2020 here in Sydney. And ironically, when it won the prize you mentioned last year, there couldn't be a physical opening night for that exhibition either. So because of COVID restrictions. So yeah, the dark shape on the window and the door can be seen as a metaphor for the threat, casting a shadow into the home. With no vaccine at that point, all we had was retreating behind closed doors. Um, I added the cat spooked from the chair to add the suggestion of unease. Um, building that tension is something I like to experiment. Mm. I love your light in your work as well, Sue. 
and this has been greatly admired by artists and collectors alike. And I often think that the time of day in your paintings, that fleeting moment between day and night is what you paint. Is that correct, Sue? Maybe tell me a bit more about that. Right, yes. Um, yes, the light in the early morning and early evening are terrific for dramatic effects and rich colour. Um, I do a lot of plain air. I, I love it. There's something about working directly where you don't have time to overthink so that the brushwork's often looser and more spontaneous. It makes a, a great outing with friends. Vicky Bosworth and I have covered a lot of the harbour. <laughs> Um, I take my paints travelling too, and one of the loveliest experiences was by a lake in Japan, um, painting Mount Fuji. Um, Sydney Picnic, the one that's shown there, um, was a challenge to make sense of that tangle of Luna Park and the, and the Harbour Bridge seen from Lavender Bay. Um, but luckily a, a mum and a baby came along and it gave it a narrative. So I often use my family as models, thank you to them. Um, there's actually a painting of Lewis in the show. Um, talking of figures, I'm grateful to the exceptionally skilled drawing teachers at Julian Ashton Art School, and in particular, Richard Porter, who taught me to paint. Beautiful work, Sue. I really love your local scenes as well, as well so much. And I'm just wondering too, if you can tell us a little bit about how the local landscape, especially around here in Putney, Gladesville, Hunters Hill, and the environment around here inform your work. Right, well, it, um, lovely. It can be anything from the location of a painting like 60,000 years ago, that one, uh, for its beauty, isolated in Iron Cove and learning about the associated Aboriginal presence in the region too, uh, yeah, to a humble um, street scene that has some appealing quirk or embellishment or light falling it, on it in a sort of dynamic way. It's your very discerning eye that picks those out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I think some of the works too have a really unusual, moody subject matter. And they're reminiscent of the early 20th century surrealists for me, like de Chirico, who comes to mind, and also the contemporary Australian painter, Rick Amor, whose dark, moody works really appeal. Are these artists and those periods influences on you, Sue? Uh, perhaps you could describe some of your processes and inspirations for us. Well, th well thank you for that comparison. Um, and yes, the moody works of artists like de Chirico are influences, also Dormia and uh, Sickert. An influence too was my mum who loved to collect old prints like Hogarth's Gin Lane and The Rake's Progress, all emotionally charged and dark subject matter. So how I work is I keep sketchbooks, jot down ideas, I try out a composition and if it excites me I'll take it through to a painting. Sometimes I do a small painting to work out the colour scheme um, and the study there that was for uh, old school new school where I did do that. I often work on more than one version of the same subject to experiment. Um, this is the case with the, the large old school new school. I wanted to play around with the colour on one after being getting too tight with the other one. Um, I paint over old pa paintings at times, Pentimento, which gives an unplanned addition. These can really work well. I, I use oil paint uh, and gesso boards mostly with canvas for bigger works and work directly where possible. Mm. It must be so difficult to know just when a work is completed or when it's just enough. I mean, how do you tell when a work is, is done, when, when, you're, when you've completed it? So Okay, yeah, when I start overthinking and become hesitant, I know it's time to step away, but it's tricky to know the timing for this. I've wrecked a few. The, the Kissing Point Park painting yeah, showing now was done plain air and was a marker for me of stepping away at an early stage. I'm grateful to Stefan Bowman for encouraging me to develop this too on bigger works and actually pushing me to 
promote my work and get to this point. Um, talking of stepping away, there's an Ivan Hitchens boathouse painting that made an impression on me for its simplicity and power. Well, your colour as well. I mean, simple but very colourfully rich and gorgeous. I mean, do you have a process for choosing? How do you choose colour, Sue? Um, well, I, I use a limited palette of warm and cool colours, uh, working around the painting to get a, a balance and I stand back a lot and see how it's all working. Um, I learn so much from looking at Cezanne paintings too for colour. I Absolutely. Believe. And I'm curious to know if your reading of the world changed when you moved, well, you've moved from New Zealand, your native New Zealand, to the UK and then now live in Australia. Has that changed your reading of the world, Sue? Yes, well, uh, yeah, my beachside childhood in New Zealand and journey on a liner as a kid in the late 60s to the UK expanded my little world for sure. The ship, which actually Arthur Boyd was on board, um, my dad and him got on really well and I played with his daughter, which is lovely. Um, so the ship sailed through the South Seas and through to Mexico, Panama Canal, so it was great as a kid. But being able to study art in the UK with the access to their incredible galleries was really special. Um, but flying into Sydney, though, in the mid-1980s was like someone flicked the lights on. Um, I saw an exciting art scene, Jenny Key's vibrant work, Judy Davis's movies, Peter Tully's um, inspired art, this is one of his. <laughs> Um, all the music venues and catching ferries. It was just great, great to take in. Amazing. I mean, how did that practically feed into your paintings? Um, yeah, well, well, Sydney's colour is a big factor. The flame trees and jacarandas, parrots, blazing sunsets and the glorious harbour uh, with the Pearl of Sydney, the Opera House. I never get tired of, of it as a subject matter. Also seeing the Aboriginal rock carvings near where I live of the Wollamatigal people conjures the raw natural beauty that once existed around here in Looking Glass Bay. Uh, Banjo Patterson Cottage is on the bay and painting on the foreshore there and knowing that the great poet strolled around here is inspiring. Um, his sister Rose lived across the bay. Uh, that's the painting I did of her home there. Beautiful. It's a gorgeous part of Sydney, a very historic part of Sydney, and you image it so well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Sue, for all that insight. What I'd like to do now is specifically explore a few of the works, half a dozen of the works. Right. There's 35 artworks in total in our exhibition, and but if we talk specifically about a few, uh, just as examplers, sure. um, then it will give us a little bit more in-depth insight. So perhaps we could start at um, the title piece for the show again, Stranger at the Door 2020. This one is an oil on canvas. It's 152 by 101 centimetres in size, just to give context to the scale. I have it in my front window at the moment. It is glorious. It looks so beautiful. And perhaps you can give us a little bit more about that one, Sue. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah. So this originated as a sketch I did in a home in Auckland, New Zealand, which I've got here. Um, I like the composition and I adapted it for, for this project. Um, I used my Sydney Harbour painting to give it contents right down by the front door there. And um, the one in the foreground here was a Colin, New Zealand artist, Colin McCann, who the people in the home owned um, as part of his waterfall series. Um, so that was just a personal connection for me, Australia and mm. New Zealand, yeah. Absolutely. And I love that in that work too, if you look very closely at the, the far distance, you can see your other work that I sold actually, gorgeous work that you refer to often in your works. Um, Pier 1 uh, on a wet day. It's a beautiful painting and it appears on the wall at the back of the work. Yes. 
paintings yes, within the nature. Yeah, paint worlds within worlds, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, perhaps now we should look at another favourite of mine, the closer you get, the further away. This is a smaller work and it's oil on board. It's 41 by 41 centimetres, beautiful size. It's a plein air painting and it was from the Callan Park series. Yes, so this is a painting done as part of a series for a group show with the theme of Callan Park, uh, the ex-psychiatric hospital, with artists from the One Plus Two studios in Lilyfield opposite Callan Park. Um, so the aperture of escape is so distant, um, enhanced by the, the, sh the dynamic, dynamic shadows there. I, I thought it suited the locations past. And um, I asked a passing student to uh, pose for me there, which was really kind of him. Yeah. Beautiful. I also love Broken. Uh, I think that's from the Callum Park series as well. Beautiful small oil on board, 25 and a half by 20 and a half centimetres. What's that all about, Sue? Yes, well, um, yeah, another Callum Park painting. So this is an entrance to the hospital, one of two. Um, where relatives and friends would have parted, leaving their loved ones in the care of the institution. So very emotionally charged around there. And you could certainly feel, mm. feel a sense of that uh, when, you, when you visit that, that building there. Mm. It has a real 1950s feel to that painting, that sort of an historic feel. Yes, mm. yes. I did, did like to set it back in time a little yeah and something quite different again uh windowsill theater uh painted in 2020 41 by 41 again all on board gorgeous work yes well my favorite mug last year during lockdown and i still i'd be very unhappy if something happened to that now um the normal the normality of a cup of tea an oasis for me in in the extraordinary time of lockdown in sydney 2020 um, so it's, it's set against my garden view um, onto the street there. So that's where the room I worked in and saw a lot of. And um, I was really surprised when I finished it because the house looked as scared as, as I was. It looks like really kind of, oh, God, what's happening? So, yeah, that's the story with that one. Summed up the mood. Mm. And... Another gorgeous work, and I think this will look familiar to many, City Oasis, the Woolamaloo Gates, about the same size, 30 by 41, oil on board. And this one is a plein air painting. Yes, that's right. It was a fab corner to work in, quiet observation in the shade. Um, <clears throat> it was a little concerning. So a bloke did a fully dressed body wash in the little shallow fountain there. That was quite alarming. It alarmed the ibis. That was around, uh, but and terrific to meet um, an artist, Colin Isaacs, who came over and had a chat there. So there's always memories with these paintings being done outside. Mm. And another very familiar scene, and um, my own favourite in the exhibition, old school, new school, and the empowerment of women. This is an oil on canvas. It's a little larger, 76 by 56 centimetres, the perfect size. And it's a stunning painting. Can you tell us about that one, Sue? Oh, well, thank you, Brenna. Yeah. Um, well, on this day, the scene jumped out on noticing schoolgirls on the steps in the foreground there. Um, a classic motif from antiquity, the knight on horseback, a maiden, a castle, in the distance set amongst woodland. Um, the contrast with the 2020 schoolgirls bringing into sharp focus the empowerment of modern women, the carefree, educated young girls free to choose their own destiny. Yeah, it just struck me. So I, I was really, it was really fun to work on that. Well, they all are, but that was fun. Mm, absolutely. And I love the column in the foreground contrasted with the contemporary buildings in the background. Oh, look, and here's another favourite. This is a beautiful oh, yeah. one. Here again is a painting with a painting within a painting. This is a, a beautiful work as well, Sydney-centric. 
Um, what a lovely way to finish, perhaps 66 by 56 centimetres. It's an oil on linen. And again, it shows that beautiful Pier 1 wet day work and that reflection in the jug. Um, yes. Um, well, this is an ethereal thank you letter in that painting to um, Richard Porter. <laughs> so, and it's all set in Sydney. And, you know, that was, it was just a, yeah, what I wanted to do. <laughs> Beautiful. I have that work behind me, actually. I don't know if it's very clear on my camera, but it's just propped up behind me. Oh, right, yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to add? And I think we'll just leave it um, at that painting. Right. Uh, yeah, no, just to thank you, Brenda, for taking me on in your beautiful gallery and Nathan for show, showcasing my work for this and everybody for coming. Thank you so much. It's been... You're very welcome. Thank you so <laughs> much. You've been absolutely marvellous. Oh. And I'm sure that if anyone would like further information on any of the other works that we haven't viewed in, individually tonight, we would be very happy for you to provide us information and to forward that to any of our clients. And I'd just like to thank you sincerely, Sue, for enlightening us on your practice and on this exceptional body of work. I think we can all relate to this exhibition. And to remind our viewers that Stranger at the Door can be virtually viewed online via our website at www.brendacollahanfineart.com. And please do send us an inquiry if you'd like to receive a private view with a close-up and a framed image of any of the images that you like. And if you'd like to purchase any work, buying is very simple online. Just click through on, again on an inquiry underneath the work you like with your details and we'll get back in touch to arrange payment and delivery. Finally, thank you very much for joining us tonight and please enjoy another video of Sue's work. Good night. <laughs>